Hello guys, this is Laurie with Laurie's Heirloom Sewing and painting and crafting and baking and gardening. So I wanted to show you one of the ideas I had for painting my Christmas cards today. I'm leaving a lot of this out here open, so I like that. It doesn't cause the cards to curl. I'm using some titanium white, and I don't need a whole lot. I might need to put a little bit more, but right now that's pretty good right there. And I will need some sap green, some lamp black, some hooker's green, Eventually, I will need some lemon yellow. I'm using lemon yellow because I want a really pale, pale, but bright yellow. And phthalo blue. Um, and scarlet. We want scarlet red. So those are the colors <clears throat> for this tree. Now you can change any of this. Seriously, I mean, you could make your, your Christmas tree, you know, blue and white. Okay, so the first brush that I want to use is a number, well, it's a half inch angle brush. This is a plaid paintbrush, but something about that size. If you are using this size card, which is six and a half by one, two, three, four and a half. Four and a half by six and a half. Okay, so my first shade needs to be the darkest. So straight up hooker's green. I'm gonna leave that out because I know I'm gonna need it. I am using a gray colored pencil to just kind of sketch it out. Now I'm going to have my orientation portrait. You could do it landscape, but it would be, you'd have a lot of empty space over here and over here. Or if you, you know, put your design on just half, then there would be a lot of empty space here. But that might be what you want. You could write your note over here and have your design over here. Alrighty. Now the thing about this is, is it's basically a lopsided triangle. And if you're uncomfortable drawing that, um, you might be able to find an image. Or if you can kind of copy mine, that might work. Alright, so I'm going to stop the, the leg of this part of the triangle right here on this side, on the left side. On the right side, I'm going to drop it down past that. So the right side stops here, and the left side stops way up here. I don't know if you can even see these marks. I don't think so. We'll just do this. Maybe that will help. So. Here Here is the left side, and over here and farther down is the right side. And then I'm going to connect these two. I might even, yeah, I did. I pulled my right side down just a bit farther. The more lopsided, the better. Okay. Then I'm going to draw a, a kind of a off-center Obviously this right up here is the top of the tree and if you wanted to sort of pretend like you're centering it, it would be about here. But I want the, the base part of this tree to be off center as well and a little bit over to the left. So I'm going to draw kind of a tall skinny and off center loopy Kind of unbalanced container like that and then I'm going to draw a, the tree trunk kind of going at it 
at an angle like that. Okay. Now most of this space right here will eventually be hidden. Not all of it, but most of it. Okay, and then this time I'm going to make my pot that this tree is in a little different glee than I did from the first one. Okay, we're going to put a little tiny bit of water on this angle brush. If you don't have an angle brush, you can use just about anything. I happen to like them because you can draw again with the drawing. Remember yesterday? <laughs> that was so funny. Okay, now I'm not making this perfect, and I don't want it to be perfect. coat that we always have. I'm going to let my paintbrush cool its hot little heels over here and I'm going to pick up my number two or if you have a number one round, the smallest round that you have. I think this is a one right here. Yep. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is, I actually forgot, we either need burnt sienna, you just want kind of a brown color for your trunk. So either a burnt sienna or a burnt umber. I'm going to use burnt umber because I want it to be dark and I'm going to mix in some lamp black. I know that lamp black is not the ideal blending black for um, creating a Van Dyke brown, but I don't have ivory black and I don't feel like digging for Mars black. Okay, that's all right. So now I'm just gonna use this little brush to kind of fill in this little spindly, lopsided little trunk. <laughs> Again, in this project we need to keep these brushes clean. It's just best to go ahead and take care of it. Okay, so this time, um, on the last one, which I'll show you later, uh, I just made it solid red, but I think this time I'm going to make the base um, gray. Trying to come up with a way to make it look Christmassy, so I'm sorry I'm adding different colors now. I'm going to just go with a gray, and we'll be using a slightly larger round. This one is a five. Okay, I'll just paint in the areas that you want to be the color that you are using. Kind of hoping this will end up looking silver and maybe if I add some white highlights but I'm planning to add some wonky polka dots to it. We'll see how that works. <laughs> Now take the absolute biggest brush you have. You want something with a really big um, 
you know, fat paintbrushy end that's rounded off. And then just create polka dots. And then I recommend taking that little bitty brush, either a one or a two, and just kind of dab that little center that always seems to happen when you do something like this. Just poke it down with your paintbrush and it will dry flat. Okay, so now, so this obviously needs some work, and of course this is going to need some work as well, but we don't want to touch this part right here, so we're going to flip our project upside down, if we can kind of think in that mode, we're not going to be drawing our or painting our uh, tree needles or limbs or whatever the way we would normally orient them we're gonna have to go upside down or just wait so I have some green I'm gonna add a little bit more hookers green to the palette and that's my first layer is just Kind of a solid, no, uh, no additional colors added to this hooker screen right here. Okay, and then I'm going to start down here at this point, right here, and I'm going to do little bitty brush marks with just a little bit of paint. I want to come off the hard edge of this triangle. I need to go all the way down. I need to leave space. There needs to be some air in there. And do the same thing on the other side. And just make these little strokes with your with your brush and you will see what I mean about why that's important we're, we're hiding the fact that we had kind of a heavy dark background and these brush strokes will show up so don't um, don't assume that they're not important because they are. Okay, and then as you get close to the bottom down here, go ahead and do brush strokes off of the bottom of your tree, like so. Go right over the top of the trunk, just like a tree would probably do in the real world out there. Just keep making little brush strokes. Make sure that you vary the thickness of the of your brush strokes. And as you're coming down off of the bottom of the tree, some will sort of angle naturally to your right and some will angle naturally to your left but you 
definitely want to mix that up. You want some to the right and some to the left. Okay. And also, if you feel that you have made a mistake and you don't like the way it looks, please hang in there. I know you've probably heard that before, but I really want you to try to just kind of hang in there because it really changes as we add a different, you know, bunch of color. Um, trees are not one color. Don't get discouraged because there's a lot of color that we have not added to this yet. And once all that color is there, this tree just seems to almost lift up off of this page. So hang in there and be patient and your artwork will be amazing. This is drying a little bit. The dots are real thick. They're kind of dimensional um, and they will smear. So again, if you feel that you might, um, you know, cause that to get smudged, just keep your tree this way or leave it overnight, let it dry and then come back to it the next day. That's the other option. Okay, so now we have titanium white and hooker's green and we're going to take a tiny little bit of our titanium I say tiny that's not really tiny we're gonna scoop up the hooker's green and we're gonna mix these together okay that gives us a very light green. I'm going to take a dab of my burnt umber and mix that in. And it's not a whole lot of paint. It's just not a whole lot of paint. That's fine because in this case maybe we don't need a whole lot of paint. All right, I'm going to thin it down with a little bit of water because I want this layer to sit kind of on top. It's just one of about four layers. Okay, so now it's kind of an inky consistency and I'm just gonna brush it on. Next, I'm going to take some sap green, and if you don't have these colors of green, you can mix up some colors with blues and yellows. I think a lot of paint kits will either have an emerald green or more often uh, this blue of Iridian, which is pretty, you know, and there are trees with that color. I would add some yellow. I would try to stay away from add white will just make it more of a turquoise color but um, you could add some phthalo blue you could add some brown uh, some yellow just try little bits because this isn't a huge painting okay so this time I have some sap green and I'm gonna do just straight up sap green I'm gonna go right in there Now I'm going to take a little tiny bit of the burnt umber. I'm going to try to avoid the lamp black. I'm going to mix that with my sap green.
Okay, so now I have kind of a light yellow green, and I'm only going to pop a little of this in. And you don't want to cover all of the dark. If you look at your tree and you feel like, oh gosh, I don't see any of that original dark color, you can add some. And in fact, we probably will throw some hooker's green, just you know, straight up hooker's green in here uh, before we're done. But um, it, it, you know, if you're cautious and careful, um, often you're you know you're good. Um, I'm just gonna be adding what I really want to add sometimes a little bit of brown because you know our trees are not all always green they have pine cones they have brown needles You could even make like a little pile of needles down at the bottom. You know, there's all sorts of things that you could do. That would add a little tad bit of irony to your painting. Okay, there we go. That's exactly what I wanted right there. Okay, awesome. Now, I need to build out or up or something this silly tree trunk. It's not too bad, but I want to add some dimension. And we are going to... Um, kind of hide it with probably some potting soil in there, which is what I used in my last little drawing. Ah, painting, why? Okay. If you get too much white, um, you know, making it look barky, you can go back over it, you know, that. There we go. All right, I'm happy with that. Excellent. Okay. All right, so now I need to work on the top part of this pot. But Van Dyke Brown is generally made by mixing an ivory black and a burnt umber. So it's a, a serviceable brown. Oh, look at what I just did. <laughs> it, it is a very serviceable brown color to most of us. Okay, I'm going to try to mix a bit of flesh and white.
right, so turn your tree sideways. Take just a nice little amount, lemon yellow, and draw an X right on the top part of the tree. And be aware, if you're using lemon yellow, it's going to show up. Okay, and then X through that and through that for whatever star shape you would like. Now take some of the unsullied titanium white, if you have already put it out. Take a little bit of that on the tip of your brush and run it right over the top of that star. All right, now just take plain white and the very tip of your paintbrush. And as steady as you can, just draw a dot, a dot, a dot, a dot. really go crazy down there in that corner. We're going to fill that up with blue and red and yellow and white. And make sure, of course, like I said, that you're getting on the outer edges as well. Have some hanging down in these little branches down here. But really fill this up. Okay. So there we go. Now we're going to get that paint out. And we're going to mix the white with our lemon yellow. And it adds a lot. It will change the color of your paint somewhat. You know, it'll make it a lighter color. Okay, so get the lemon yellow titanium white mix on the tip of your brush. Try to just, you know, keep it there if possible and do the same thing. Just right on the tip of your brush and Thalo Blue. And if you want to, you can create two shades of blue with your phthalo. You can have a dark blue and a pale blue. Um, it's entirely up to you. I'll show you what the dark blue looks like when you use just plain unmixed phthalo blue. So I'm happy with mine. I hope you're happy with your funny little tree. It feels like the 2020 tree to me. That's why I chose this one today. It's like, okay, yeah. 
didn't we start off? Yeah, we did. COVID was just kind of starting to hit the news. Just maybe barely about this time last year. Okay. Uh, time to sign. The rule for me is if I sign a painting, I cannot go back and change anything. Even if I want to, it's just that's the rule. So I won't be changing anything on that one. I'm happy with it anyway. So here is my embroidery that I'm currently working on. If you've been following me, you know it is the Bluebird by I Done My Best. It's number 132 in that series, which is, to be honest with you, fairly old. I used to sell this in my shop, and that was a long time ago. and. I happened to choose to do this one at this particular time because it is kind of a holiday design. If you look, you'll see holly and holly berries. I know that's really glaring. I'm sorry. Let's see if I can turn it there. But I am almost done. I have some numerals to do here. I've done my best. Um, here if I choose to do it I may not I may just leave that blank I don't have to put that there so I may just heat erase that off heat erase off my signature I'm kind of thinking I am going to um, frame this and I had an idea last night uh, long after I turned the camera off and I have some little teeny tiny jingle bells that I am thinking about putting on these uh, little curly cues. Here, I'll show you on here. If I can do this without glaringly blinding. So at the very tippy top, those are French knots. On the three up here and these two down here do not these two do not have a French knot these three up here do but um, I'm kind of thinking I might just do those little jingle bells which would then kind of really pull it into the holiday well as it turns out how odd I have three little tiny jingle bells I do have, I have three little stars I'm just going through for is brown that matches I think that's too red oh I think that's it that's perfectly <laughs> that little bird put him in here So I'm going to get this finished. I'm going to get these three jingle bells attached. Okay, so the other day, this arrived. 
I did open it because I was in the midst of the massive declutter in this room. These will be used as um, Christmas gifts. I'm not sure what this is. This might be... Uh, I have no idea. It might be something I just ordered for myself. I know I needed some magnesium. We'll see. Oh no, it's from my Keurig. Yeah, you guys, seriously, if you have a Keurig and you use it, check on your filter. I dump all the water out of my Keurig at night. I had not checked to see the condition of this tube, filter tube thing. Oh my God. Non-sponsored, no affiliation with Keurig. Okay. I wanted to show you the cards because you guys have been so sweet and hanging out with me throughout the process. This is the one that we did yesterday. And this is the one that preceded that one. Oops. This one more of an autumn and I haven't signed it yet so I'm kind of trying to figure out if I want to add something and I can only add if I haven't signed so I'll set that one over there this is this one this one This one I got the idea from, from Painting with Jane. So be sure and check out her YouTube channel. What <laughs> row? I have two envelopes left out of the pack of envelopes so I think I'm going to do two watercolor cards. Okay guys, so this is the Keurig filter holder and if you, like me, have any trouble figuring out how to get this piece off, this bottom piece right here has to come off so that you can put the filter inside this which then sits down inside of your Keurig. This is the top that you set the date on and then this down here is what the part that actually clicks into the bottom part of your Keurig water reservoir. So while the charcoal filter is soaking, it's supposed to soak for five minutes and then you rinse it for 60 seconds. I was trying to get this piece off. I was pushing and pulling and really just hurt my hand. I mean look, trying to get this off. And then <sighs> the Keurig gods bopped me on the head. Even after I read the instructions, there was nothing about how to remove this. It's the side right here. This part and this part. Not this, but these two pieces right here. And when you squeeze, it's real easy to squeeze. And then this just comes off. So it's this part right here. Not this part. 
if that has ever confounded you, I hope I just helped. So if you're thinking, huh, it's been a year. So this whole thing is getting replaced on mine. All right, so this is my Artist Loft watercolor half pan set. And it's, I wish it had one of those little turn dials. And it is hideous, I realize. You always start out thinking to yourself, I am not going to let this one turn into that horrible mess that they always turn into. And then it just, it just does. So it comes with this little brush. If you've never seen one before, they're awesome. You can take the, um, the tip off. It just unscrews. So you push on both sides. It says push like so. I usually just dip it in the water, give it a kind of a squeeze. It will fill up all the way with water. And then you just screw that um, paintbrush end back on. And you will squeeze and get water. So you will have, always have water available to you as it comes down through here and through the bristles. I'm going to take my mop brush, this guy right here, and get it wet. And I'm just going to just kind of go across. Oop, sorry. I just want the, the paints to be wet. I'm just going to let this mop brush kind of sit over here for a while today. I don't want, I don't like to store my brushes like this in their jar because water will run down and in between the bristles and the bezel and it's just not, um, it's not a good way to store your brushes. All right. Okay, so I also will need a pen. Okay, so I found a black Sharpie and a silver Sharpie, which I think will come in handy. Now, I mean, somebody's been chewing. Ugh. It says fine point. It's not what I would consider to be a fine point. Um, if anything, a medium. But it's a little bit wide, as you can see. So I will like use this a little bit. This one um, is a little bit less smooshy and has a nice silver color so we will be using these. Now next thing is make sure my hands are clean Trying to make sure it's not wet. Okay. I'm going to go with some green. Okay, guys. Well, my first tree that we did together uh, kind of bit the dust. I had a, a Coca-Cola accident in here, so I am redoing it, and I decided to do it differently because the tree that we were doing looked a little bit too much like the other two trees that I did. So I've, I'm doing this one uh, kind of in a different way, and I will explain. I, the reason I'm 
did some of this off camera is I had a phone call that I had to take. And I sure do wish that I could give you color names, but these are not named. They have numbers. Um, and as I said, if you purchase this particular half pan, I suspect you would get these same colors. Um, and mine has like four shades of green, four shades of brown, a black, very dark purple, blue, about four or five shades of yellow and orange, three shades of kind of a red, and then I have purple and white with four shades of blue. So um, there's a lot of mixing potential that you've got there. somewhere where it won't get destroyed which was so sad but you know a lot happens when you're dealing with multiple issues okay here it is I was afraid I couldn't find it this is honestly an insane color this thread right here is Soology it's the first time I've ever ordered Soology thread I don't know if you guys know anything about Soology. I did pay like four, I think it was four forty nine. I didn't have to pay for shipping. Um, it's color number one five three five, and it looks blue. And every time I look at it, I think it's blue, but it is black. It's just so weird. So it's a different shade of black that I'm actually used to. But if you have ever used Soology thread and you like it, please leave a comment below and let me know. Except for the trunk, the tree is dry. And the way I can tell is if I just tip this card and look at it in the light, I can tell that the whole thing is dry with the exception of the trunk, which as you can see, is still shiny. I'm going to take my little paintbrush add some water I can't tell you guys how excited I am to try my coffee in the morning with that new filter wow that's gonna be so nice okay all right I think on this particular tree I'm gonna add some different colors I'm gonna go with purple A magenta so <laughs> that's what's gonna happen I'm just gonna let it sit there and dry and just let it just be a tree I hope everybody is having a really good week. I hope that November is kind to you and your family and those that you love and care about. And um, 
I'm I basically I'm not signing off right now but I'm going to let this dry it's doing some pretty interesting things in the process like this purple is kind of brown here but this purple is purple it's really kind of cool I like it I think I will add a dab of purple on top of the purple that dried kind of brown <laughs> just to darken it up a little bit Alrighty, so now this is basically dry. There's a couple little spots that are still eh, kind of wet. And then this, I drew three lines with the silver um, Sharpie. And I'm going to paint baubles in, in this one. So, and we'll see how it looks. It could be that it just looks awful and I can't do it. I don't know um, but because they're um, kind of purpley and and magenta y I'm gonna use those colors okay guys so I like this but I want to work on my technique a little bit I think um, with a little bit of tightening up I can come up with something a little bit less than that so that is a technical term by the way all right, so next I'm going to take white with a round brush. This is a number four. I have, oh, here it is. This is my number two, which I prefer to use. It's a little bit smaller and I have a little bit more control. just kind of going over that yellow and uh, silver for kind of a halo-y effect on the star up there at the top. Okay, now I want to add a bit of highlight to the tree skirt down here and white is a great color for that. You can add detail with black that you might not see um, otherwise. And lay it flat and kind of scoot up. Okay.
But anyway, I'm going to sign it. I feel like it's done. I'm going to use my black. I'm going to sign it over here. And again, I'm putting 2020 instead of just 20. Okay. And you know what that means. If I've signed it, it's done. All right, kiddos. I'm going to go ahead and call it a day. And um, I will see you in the next video. Please hit that thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't done so. Thank you for watching. Bye.